I'm answering your questions about the hot tours around this town. From voodoo to grand opera in the French Opera House, baby, we got them all. <laughs> so we'll take you to the haunts of the literati. Speaking of haunts, you can visit the cities of the dead, the above-ground cemeteries native only to New Orleans. <laughs> Visit the Presbytero on beautiful Jackson Square, where you can see not only maps of the area from the 1500s, but also Marie Antoinette's personal rosary. Is money your thing? Who amongst us <laughs> Sorry about that. I watch fast. You went smoking during the day. Special occasion to lay off. What happened? Some woman couldn't wait for the elevator, decided to walk ten floors down. Was she temporarily or permanently indisposed? Dead. It's all right. It's spooky, but it's all right. Why? What's the upshot? Well, at least they know we're serious. I didn't realize that was a concern. Lizard, you are one in a dozen. Dear Jesus, my name is Coco Chavez. Why I choose this moment to talk to you is not important. Life does have its moments of uncertainty, and even school kids know that kidnapping's a fool's game. But this was my idea. Junior and I have been pulling shakedowns on and off. Why don't we go someplace we can get some room service? Yo, 
wife, she wants five grand a month, the car, and the beach house while she see you in court. I strongly suggest you sign. When I came across career-defining information, grifter heaven stuff. So we roped in freelance mastermind Lizard Brown, an odd sort of guy who drifted in and out the scene. Hey, like we just slid in. Where you been? People keep asking me that. That's not an answer. Harvard. That's an answer. I wish I came up with that. So what have you been up to? You know, just killing packs of wild 16-year-olds for fun. I thought your homicidal tendencies to be strictly profit motivated. You did go to Harvard, you slimy old devil. So? So we're having a romantic dinner. So I should leave. So you should be a little more charming, a little less bent on displaying your spoiled up class upbringing. You guys are still doing divorce jobs. Well, not for long. I've been toying with a kidnapping game. Oh, come on. Even school kids know kidnapping's a fool's game. There's no angle in that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This, this is all news to me. What are you talking about, sweetie? I'm talking about I'm sick of faking orgasms for pocket change. It's getting old. So kidnapping? So why not? So run with it. Run with it nowhere. Last job I did was this accountant geek. Works for Die Scan, some software. Die Escape. They're worth billions. This guy, Ben Dyson, built it from scratch. Now everybody's got to have his fucking application wired into their computer or they can't access anything. The guy's a certified genius. All right. So this accountant, he handles the company's insurance payouts, right? Now, he happens to inform me that if this Ben Dyson genius were to be kidnapped, Dyscape has $4 million allotted to the immediate payout of the ransom money. I mean, no questions asked. This guy's too valuable. Like you said, he's worth billions. So he's insured for four mil. Yeah, but this guy must have a skadillion bodyguards and a bazillion high-tech alarm systems and what have you. Well, maybe so, baby, but I mean, we're talking some heavy coin here. I think it's worth checking out. So why are you telling me in front of Lizzie? Because he's not going to want to be involved. And this isn't white collar enough for him. And uh, you're not going to stand our way should we go ahead with it, are you? I'll call you. Your dinner's on me. Buenas noches. I'll scope out Dyson's pad again tomorrow. I thought it was my turn. You get to do all the fun stuff. You just find a muscle man, sweetie. To find a muscle man in New Orleans, or in fact, to get permission for any kind of underworld gig, you had to go to Papa Malavera. Papa was an ex-preacher turned gangster who knew New Orleans like he knew the Bible. And no offense, Jesus, he knew the Bible better than God. Miss Chavez. Hmm, Mr. Malavero. You've been reading the book lately? Oh, not since you stopped preaching, no. You been back to church? <laughs> you of all people ought to know that the church makes wise men into fools. I'm truly sorry about my behavior that day, Coco. Anyone would have done the same, Poppy. I mean, like you say, place lends itself to that sort of thing. Hell of an old to go you were. Mm-hmm. Sal! Uh-huh. That Mormon kid, Molina dug up in Salt Lake, former middleweight. Former middleweight. Sergio. Sergio dos veces. Yeah, that one. So, uh, how did he make out in that junkyard spill? Junkyard spill. He lost an arm, boss. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Might have lost an eye, too. I could find out about that for you right now. Ruben Rubenbauer. Ruben Rubenbauer. Ruben Rubenbauer. Show shit, sugar. This Jim kid, he got moves like I ain't seen since forever. We sent him out back up on a jewelry store gig. He got attacked by a random cop and two, count them two, pit bulls. He cuts up the watchman, tears up the dogs. Death is it. Yeah, with his instructions. So, the partners, they come out with the loot. Like nothing. Didn't even hear the scuffle. He's so quiet. Sal's gonna give you the number. Thanks, Poppy. Clean, clean, clean. Poppy says you're a crazy fuck, but you never slipped on nothing. You never done any time. Well, what do you make of that? I don't know. I don't really trust it. I mean, it could be you're lucky. It could be you're a snatch. Any for your thoughts? Uh, you don't want to know. Oh, try me. <laughs> no, that's a trick answer. My thoughts involve you in all kind of indecent type situations. 
Where are you from? Me? I'm from Wanne Eichel, North Rhine-Westfalen. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's there to do there? Set dog tails on fire, watch flies fuck, drink, chase your little sister. You a badass, Ruben? Let me see that. No. Let me see that. No. All right. Hey, hey, wait. wait. All right. I'll call you. Maybe. Wait. You are a crazy fuck, and you're stupid. As I said, I'll call you. Maybe. Can you mumbo? Can I what? Mumbo, the dance. I call it the save my ass member. Because, you know, basically I'm the best fucking strong arm you can find. And I kill whatever you want. Guns are nice, you can pick. But see, I I get nervous at job interviews. I, I, I show off a little, I kind of sabotage myself. So, but I figure, if you got nothing to lose and I got nothing to lose here, let's mumble. Ruben's Mambo did the trick. But nothing we had planned could really make us ready for this. You ready for this? We'll find out in a hurry. I gotta calm down like pronto. Adrenaline overdrive. Oh. Can you breathe in that? You comfortable? You need to go to the bathroom or anything? 
You are allowed to talk. <laughs> we are not weird or nothing, you know. Yes. Yes, we are weird? No. <laughs> yes. I need to go to the bathroom. Police are now on the scene at 351 Park Circle, where computer giant Ben Dyson was kidnapped earlier today. Found dead in his apartment was Mrs. Patricia Hornbeck, wife of Senator Rupert Hornbeck. It is not clear how this shocking murder is connected to the kidnapping case, but this frenzy of police and federal agents has not been seen since... Fine, George. What do you got? Well, you're not a case man. What's up? Matty Grimes broke his foot. I'm filling in. What do you got? Clemencia Ruiz, maid, found the body. She's in the kitchen. Fred Gordon, building security guard with a broken head. He's in the hospital. Let's start with the maid. Get me a tape recorder, a refill, and send these people home, will you? once, Miss Ruiz. Were you in the apartment at the time of the murder? No. Where were you? Every Thursday, I go buy groceries. And when I came back, I opened the door, and I saw the woman. I screamed so loud, so loud. I've never seen, I've never. Did, did you know her? No, no. She wasn't a friend of Mr. Dyson's? No, no. <laughs> when did you first realize that Mr. Dyson was missing? I called 911, and the policeman waits for Mr. Dyson and waits and waits, and, and then they, they saw that package. I pick it up in my way in, but what is this world coming to? I think God must be sleeping. Remember? <laughs> Chief, the butler did it. I'm sorry it took me so long when the clues were so clear. You want to meet the senator? It's not my case, but I hear he's a lousy poker player. The senator's a good man to know. Every agent Hawkins is in charge of the kidnapping, and you're going to handle the murder. Now, I want you to pull whatever favors you need from whoever and make like this assignment suits your ambitions, because you're going to be stepping all over their investigation. I don't want this job. Senator and I go way back. I don't want this job. Detective Grimes will be on sick leave for a few weeks, so this is your case now. I don't want this job. I know. Let me make this very clear. Dyscape is in no way going to jeopardize the safety of Mr. Dyson. We are fully prepared to meet the kidnapper's demands by tomorrow as specified in this note, and to deliver the $4 million in cash to whatever location they specify in exchange for Mr. Dyson. A call is supposed to be made to this office at 8 p.m. tonight I bought my daughter her first computer last no week. Audible interference I must admit, the they're a lot of fun. We are glad to be of assistance to the authorities as much as we see fit, but we will not, I repeat, will not in any way stall, mislead, or trick the kidnappers. And that is final. You got it. So fill me in. Well, that remark could be misconstrued as sexual harassment, Agent Hawkins. Let's get it out of the way, then. 
you've never worked under a female superior before. I got to where I am by pushing paper and playing nice. I never let you fire a gun before. I'm only in this job to prove to my father I'm not a coward. I give decent hands, so I got promoted before all the worthy candidates, all of them men, all of them equally gifted at fellatio, but there was a gender quota to fill. I'm also stupid and idealistic. You are hard and cynical and usually right. I'm secretly in love with you, but I have a hard time showing it. Did I skip anything? You're a better driver than me, and I'm too proud to admit it. You're right. So you keep me updated on everything, and you have my permission to assist us as much as you like. That's very thoughtful of you. Anything turn up with the rent-a-cop? I'm on my way to the hospital right now. Mm -hmm. How about the woman upstairs? The name's Mary Ellen Floyd. She used to play tennis with the senator's wife. I have an appointment with her in an hour. You come to the senator's? You inviting me? You bet. You like me on top? Half the time. Want to have sex later? Sure, I'll check with my ex-wife. Check with my ex-husband. It was too bad about Joyce Lakeland. If only she hadn't loved it, when I beat her, the whole trouble wouldn't have started. Well, my, you really know you're Jim Thompson. That's pretty impressive for a detective. I'm filled with contradictions, Agent Hawkins. You'll see. What's left of me? Who are you? Detective David Freeman. Might I talk to you? Well, I, I didn't see nothing good. Just some delivery guy fussing with the video monitor, floor 10. But, but, but you know that. He came up close to the camera. Uh, dark hair, uh, late 20s, uh, yeah, may maybe 30s. Well, heck, maybe 40s. I, I don't know. My eyesight ain't so good. Clearly. You know that uh, you're the last person to see Mrs. Hornbeck alive. I am very sorry that you have to recap the incident only hours after it happened. I only wish I could be of more assistance. Patty and I had lunch and played tennis every Thursday. Sometimes after we played, she would come back here and shower. She was so, so ridiculous. She was so smart, so funny. She was my best friend. We'd known each other for 15 years. She left my apartment today, and, uh, and she got murdered because she took the stairs and not the elevator. That's so pathetic. I miss her so much already. Beg you all, from the deepest part of my soul, to find these degenerates. I want them prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. Then, God help me, I want to pass a new law that will bring them to justice. I swear. I beg you all, your pardon for my conduct here. Today, I, I, I don't think the words exist to express what I'm feeling. I hope, I hope none of you ever get to understand what it's like. just committed suicide. Well? That's a boy. 
What's that get us? Dawson walks, he knows nothing. He saw me for a fraction of a second. I can live with that. I try to pull a ransom scheme, someone might get seen, and they're gonna fry us. I should have shot her. What the fuck difference does it make? She had to go down no matter what. It's still the same dilemma. Four million dollars. I've never quit nothing. Unless you can't school, but that wasn't my fault. Okay. We have till tomorrow to decide. Let's assess here for a minute. They're looking for us anyway. In like Boku numbers. We walk, we're clean. They can never trace us. Freaky stuff happens like that. Criminal negligence or not, the job remains the same. Nothing's the same, man. We all, what's that fucking word? Hinked. We all hinked here. Before they're coming clueless, now they're coming pissed. It makes a fucking difference. We can ring up tonight, jerk the leash a little, feel it out. Fuck halfway, if we're in, we're in. Reuben. Reuben what? Are you back in? I've never been out. This is Walters. OK, this phone is tapped. Talk to you at Caprice Pizza across the street. You got five minutes. I told you they'd know. I'd be real worried about your boss if they didn't. Come on, honey. How's it doing? Still crying. Oh, Christ almighty, the man's going to have a salt deficiency by the time he's done. <laughs> Hello? Mr. Walters, please? Yes. Hello? Say hello to the Fed beside you. What's his name? Her name is Hawkins. No, 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 no. I only want to speak to you, as I said in my note, but say hello. Tell her the veggie paninis are outstanding at Capri. It's a cellular. How long will it take you? Piece of cake. Silver briefcase, model 399. With the black handles. Yes, of course. Hello? So, four million used bills, no problem. Don't you feel stupid repeating everything to the feds? I'm sorry, what? I'll call you at noon tomorrow. You will call tomorrow noon? Can't get used bills till the afternoon. Actually, I don't think I can get used bills until the afternoon. That's general. Are you an early riser? I beg your pardon? He's calling from a different line every 30 seconds or so. Can't get the trace. He's not bad. <laughs> Are you an early riser? Yes, I'm an early riser. Make it 8 AM, then. You will call at 8 a.m. Stall him for us for the afternoon. Actually, I don't think I'll be able to get the money until the afternoon. That's when the bank generally opens. The gentleman I speak to. 6 a.m. then. 6 a.m. You're going to call at 6 a.m. I just. You keep playing games, and I'm going to keep pushing the time. Is that clear? It's clear. Say so you're sorry. I'm sorry. May I speak to Mr. Dyson? Oh, man. <laughs> There's no need to cry. You're going to be out of here tomorrow. I know this all seems very uncivilized and cruel, <laughs> but we are not going to hurt you, OK? Come on, let's get you on the phone. You can talk to your accountant. There's no need to be a scared bunny. <laughs> <laughs> If you touch her again, I don't give a fuck how much your brain is worth. It's gonna end up splayed out all over this room. Do you understand? <laughs> Easy, everyone. Phone's waiting. <laughs> you okay, sweetie? I've never been hit in the face before. Yeah. Fuck, that hurts. Don't you ever lay a hand on me like that. Honey, I would never. I was thinking scared bunnies, a term of endearment. Very well, then. 5 a.m. it is. Here's Dyson. Mr. Dyson? Who is this? Walters. Accounting. Are you OK, sir? I've been better, Mr. Walters. You'll be safe in no time. We're doing everything we can to so get you. So then he's alive. Talk to you at 4 a.m. Tell Hawkins and Kula La Belena. If I get the sense that you're lying to me again, I cut up Dyson in a million pieces and disappear. Definitely Dyson. Detective. Catch him yet? Payouts at 4 a.m. That gives me a hell of a lot of time, Hawkins. It's only if you assume we're not going to get him. Giving you all the credit in the world, I still have to look at it both ways. If you blow it at 4 a.m., they're gone. Kidnappers always screw up. It's part of their makeup as a species. I'm willing to hear that the FBI works into such scientific truths. Well, fuck me sideways. Not here. 
Is it too late to revisit the grieving witness? Not if you bring her flowers. See you at Dyscape in a few. Miss Floyd, I'm sorry to trouble you again. I, I forgot my lighter. It sounds petty. It was the only thing my father left me. you again. No problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to call it a night, huh? Patty wasn't bad. I'm sure she wasn't. She didn't need to be bad to become a victim, if that's where you're heading. I'd do anything for her. You do understand that, don't you? Yes, I do. It's not for me to say what is right or what is wrong. She really, I'm quite sure she did. I, it would have worked out for them. I just, I feel it. It would have worked out for Patty and the Senator. <laughs> Patty and Ben. Patty Hornbeck and Ben Dyson. They were involved. She was so happy, it felt like something good was finally happening in her life. How long have they been seeing each other? They came here every Thursday for the last three months. It had been going on earlier, maybe about a year. Come on, it's time to go to sleep. Tomorrow's a new day. And we all get a fresh start. Tell me your dreams. I dream of being strapped to a wood frame in a barn. With horns on my head and a cowbell around my neck. Taken from behind by a gigantic bull. No, I mean your dreams. What do you want to do with your life? Listen. I am the most available female alien in this galaxy. You don't have to concoct all these silly plans just to see me naked. Fly am's no good. So we make the idiot wait till nine, then start. Fly am's no good. So we make the idiot wait till nine, then start. Duma vidmi sava I At the tone. That in it? We didn't drink as much as I do. You gotta start early. Happy reading, my friend. Let's take a look at Ben Dyson's phone bills as well. You know, uh, I jump when you say jump for you, man, but this is pushing it. I mean, the cleaning people get here in 15 minutes. Better make it snappy then. Friedman, I appreciate it. Once this is all over, we could catch some dinner. I'd like that. You take care. How much do you sleep at night? I beg your pardon? How many hours? About four, average. You? Same here. Maybe we could have some late night dinner. Put that away. The bacon's dead already. 
I just haven't gone this long without killing something. You had your chance. Come on, you know I would have shot her. But Coco was tremendous. No, you really were. You were great. You didn't freeze up. I never forget the first time I had to clip somebody. Ah, huh. my entire body froze. Well, my entire body except my asshole. <laughs> I had the runs for a whole week. <laughs> you don't even look like you got the runs. You probably bit off your mother's nipple when you were a baby, huh? <laughs> Doing real good, Mr. Dyson. You know, I, I never shot anything but beer cans before. Well, and a bird once, but that was a bet and I was drunk. Look, I guess I just want to tell you, you know, so that, so that you know. You're doing real good, considering. If you excuse me. I feel nauseous. Maybe you're pregnant. I wish. You know what I'm talking about. You gotta stop punishing yourself, Coco. You had no choice. How could I have no choice? What do you want me to say? That you fucked up? Because you didn't. It was a tough situation, and you did what you had to do. Of course you feel bad. You feel bad because you're not a monster. I've never killed anyone before. Exactly. You done good until now. This was an accident. You done good until now? What's that supposed to mean? Well, it means... what it means. Listen, you and I, what's between us, it's like, without jinx or nothing, Coco, we've been through a lot. Good and bad. Officially, mostly bad, but we always managed to keep our sense of humor about it. And life is a complicated little comedy. And if you whack yourself off kilter here, we're both going to drown. Because we're connected. We don't just have a lot of things in common, sweetie. We're the same. And this is life. Fuck ups happen, and we learn from them. Now, you're flipping out right now because you think this accident puts us in more danger than before. But the truth is, it doesn't. Or, or, or we don't know yet. Or we won't know till this whole thing is done. But projecting all this fear onto me right now, it's not going to help either of us. Please don't get killed. I can manage without you, but I don't feel like it. You have built a perfectly greased machine and set in motion. Now it's time to let it go. Take a bath. Watch TV. 
TV. Read a magazine. Anything. Just let it play out. Now I'm gonna see you in a couple of hours, and that's a promise. Don't say you promise. That's bad luck. I don't promise. But I love you. Now, Ruben's packing everything we got. I'm gonna leave this here with you just in case. And do keep an eye on Lizard as much as possible, you hear? Yeah. Here we go, Buffalo. Shouldn't you be doing something? You're starting a conversation, Walters. I can't really tell. I mean, are we just gonna wait all day? You're getting paid, aren't you? I guess I'm getting paid. For sitting around with federal protection? Usually you have to rat and maid guys to get that kind of attention. Take off your shoes. Live a little. Showtime. Hello? Go to Wally's auto shop downtown. You got 32 minutes. I'll be there. I know you will. Santa's a slow dresser, huh? Mm-hmm. Oh, Detective, I'm uh, afraid the Senator can't speak to you at the moment. Afraid is the operative word in that sentence. Leanne, this is Rickles. Uh, tell Officer to bring the car around. I've been drinking bad coffee for the last 45 minutes, waiting for His Highness to emerge now. I'm sure his beloved dead wife isn't quite as pressing an issue as this international conference he's going to be five minutes late for, but I just don't have the time to wait until after. I don't appreciate your tone, detective. I need to speak to you in private. You got my undivided attention from here to the car. Let's see if you can hold it. Did you know your wife and Ben Dyson had a relationship? No, but it doesn't surprise me. My wife and I have a relationship with just about everyone worth knowing in this city. That's not the kind of relationship I'm talking about. Then make yourself clear, Detective. Life is fleeting. You know she's been having an affair with Mr. Dyson these past few months? You must be talking about your wife, Detective, not mine. I have proof. They spoke several times a day over the phone. Listen to me carefully, you little prick. I don't know what your angle is here. Frankly, I don't give a damn. But if smearing the names of stand-up citizens is your idea of a police investigation, then maybe Chief Bleeker could find you a job in one of the tabloids. I don't have the time or the patience to destroy your miserable existence, but I know several people who do. Don't ever speak to me again. Don't you even dare look at me. If you get near my house again, I will pull so many strings so far beyond the level of your comprehension, it's going to take 50 years to dig up your bones in some wasteland pit in Central America. You were Maddie. Maddie Grimes? Yeah, well, actually, you just, your, your cars look similar. I'm a, uh, ha, have a good day. I tried it once, you know. I forget the reason why. Only once? Amateur. Why, you? Really? I don't like to dwell on my failures. You're lying. 
Maybe so, maybe not. But the best bet is, who knows? Because when you try to kill yourself once, you never forget how the blood gushed out and that horrible face you made in the mirror. From there, one embellishes. It's all so romantic, you know? It's like all those rumors you hear. Maybe Lizard is a cop, or maybe he was behind the killing of those old folks in that social security scam. You just never know. Precisely. It's all so diabolically unimportant. Just talk. You and Junior were high school sweethearts, weren't you? Uh, we'd ever gone to high school, yeah. How'd you two meet, anyway? Mm, I had this uh, crazy-ass boyfriend, Jiminy Cricket. I've heard of him. Short, green guy, kept Pinocchio out of trouble. Jiminy was a speed freak with a self-esteem problem the size of Kansas. He claimed his saliva was a sperm rich or some other nonsense. But I was young and he did have a cool bike and what have you. I was going through a phase. Anyway, we were gonna hit this supermarket that Junior worked at. I didn't really know him, but Jiminy said he was a stand-up guy. We were planning on breaking in through the meat freezer skylight, but Jiminy never showed up. I was fed up with him. He'd flaked on other jobs, and I was starting to see a little future in the relationship. So I broke in alone and met Junior by the liquor boxes. Meat freezer connected with the regular storage area, and he'd chosen to hide out there during close-up. But he'd miscalculated Night Watchman's routine, and he got locked in, period. So when I showed up, he was half drunk and depressed. Not a good start. All right. We decided to abort the plan and stack up the liquor boxes to climb out. When Jiminy showed up, noticed the open skylight, saw me nowhere, and closed it as to not arouse any suspicion and do the job the following night. So what else could Junior and I do but get drunk? We spent the night swapping stories, made a deal to change the world, settled on changing ourselves. forget the fresh smell of blood and the rawness, all that flesh. It was right then and there I knew I was in love. How'd you two get out? Oh, next morning they just opened the supermarket. We walked right on out. Junior quit on the spot. And to this day, I can't look at a steak without getting wet. We got a goofy yellow car in front of Wally's. There's a van up the street, mm, very discreet. And there's another car pulled up in front of the food truck. There's a woman getting out. She looks like our leader. She's kind of cute. Tell him I can take all of them from here, just in case we need to. And Ruben says, I heard it. Tell the jackal to stand down and call you back. No, 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 Mrs. Gervitz. I told you your alternator was just fine, but the radiator. We already rebuilt the radiator. That's the point. <clears throat> now, we got ourselves a situation here. You cannot expect me to undo the work. You do understand that do we... Do you have call waiting? What do you want? I need that phone, Mr. Uh, Wally. I need it right now. It's a police emergency. Son, you are not a cop. Get the fuck out of here, Mr. Wally. Fuck you. No, no, no ma'am, not you. No, look, labor has already been committed on your Mercedes. That is not in question here. All right, just let me, let me look at the file. You just hang on. God, women. Yes? You make me wait, and that's the last you hear from me. I am sorry. 
What are you doing? What are you doing? I need that phone. What's going on down there? Oh, you're missing a beautiful routine. Wally Mechanic's about to beat the hell out of our helpless accountant. He's calling out for help. Or well, the agents are coming in. Oh, Wally's swinging the tire, and I think he's he's gonna stand up. He's standing up to two agents. Male or does... female, the agents. Male. Walters is inside. Hello? You playing games, is that it? No, 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 you don't understand. The mechanic pushed me around outside. I don't understand. I don't know whatever gave you the idea you were dealing with a child. I'm not sure Ben Dyson would be amused by your incompetence and disregard for his life, but let's straighten this out right now. No, no, I'm not lying to you. I was here on time. I was here the man. Shut up. It's very simple. Get rid of the goons outside the office, tell Hawkins to go fuck herself and lose the van. Lie to me and carry Dyson's death on your conscience for life. It's not a threat, it's a promise. You gotta make it across town to the Three Horseshoes Motel. It's on Seeker Street, the phone is in the lobby, take a cab. You know I'm watching you, so let's up the stakes a little. If I see any of your friends near you, I'm gonna shoot you on the spot. He's been instructed to take a cab to a motel. We're being watched as we speak. Oh, I can't see you. Send two agents over to the motel, have them check for cameras. They can't see him inside the motel otherwise. Unless, of course, they're inside. There you go, ma'am. Thank you, but you know what? I don't think they're that stupid. Want to get another agent in a cab? We'll drive the little accountant over. <sighs> they're watching us. So you want to stick around, look for anybody that looks like a kidnapper? It's not the weekend yet, though. I'm here to talk to Maddie. Come on. Hey there, Tinkerbell. Hi, Daddy. You not in school? Just got cold. Maddie's in there, though. What's shaking, Friedman? Came to pay you a visit. The boys miss you, and we all wish you get better soon. <laughs> You're worse liar than me. What can I do you for? I inherited your Hornbeck case. I heard. Do me proud, but not too proud. I still need my job once I get better. Freaky coincidence, breaking your foot yesterday morning when all this was about to come down. Well, everything happens for a reason. Most of the time, the reason simply being life is fucked. Now, I don't mean to rush you or nothing, but uh, I'm about to take a nap. You know Hornbeck pretty well? He's an ex-cop. I've sat down with him once or twice. Plays a lousy game of poker, but then I told you that. You go there a lot? Friedman, I like you. I really do. But if you're gonna ask something, do it. Did you bug Patty Hornbeck's phone? Jesus Christ. You've been up all night, haven't you? You're the best fucking wire man in the entire force. Just give me a straight yes or no. I, I'll play dumb with this whole scam. I ain't looking to get promoted, and I ain't looking to get killed. I didn't bug nobody's phone. I'm asking you nice, Maddie. I don't want the goddamn job. You really should take some time off. You've gone totally paranoid. You bluffed, I called. Get hey, away! I'm going with you, man! I'm gonna break your foot. It's broken already. It's broken already! Well, there's no way you'd hop like that if it was broken. Say goodbye to your foot. Stop it! Put that away! Did you bug her phone? I'm gonna get you for this, Freeman. I swear to God I am. Did you? Yes or no? No! Crazy son of a bitch. Ah! Did you? Yes! Thanks. He has a cab. Walters looks like he's about to pass out. He's getting in. Can you see the driver? Uh, negative. You think he's one of them? Oh, I'll bet my life feds are preposterously unimaginative. Hold on a sec. Hey, sweetie. Lizard's right, Sugar Pop. I mean, Walters has to be wired up the ass, but there's just one now. So you let Reuben handle that if needed, you hear? You sit tight. You wait till the agents leave. If they don't, you stash your equipment, you leave one at a time. How you feeling? 
Oh, might rest this pumpkin, but uh, it's just natural. How's Lizzie? He's breathing up a storm with that Kundalini nonsense of his. Well, as long as he keeps still, I I'll talk to you in five. Hey, sweetie. Have you had lunch? Are you here for Rolo? Excuse me? If you're here for him, he got arrested. Who? Rolo. Lobby. Who? Rolo ain't here, you know. Arrested. Uh-huh. Who? Oh, I don't know any Walters. This is Walters. Who's Rolo? I have no idea. The agent in the cab getting all this down? What? What? What agent? You want to die? Listen up, there is a green couch behind you. See it? Yep. There's a phone underneath it and a note. Read the note, tear it up in front of the clerk, and do as it says. Fuck! You! Not you, lady. Enough night her before. Son of a bitch is definitely not watching me now. And if this woman is involved, she is some kind of genius. I don't know about you guys, but you are on your own. I'm taking the 12 o'clock train across the street. That gives me four minutes to catch it. cars follow this train. Chief, I told the detective he had to wait. Well, he's in now. Please leave us alone. Well, sir? You pulled Maddie off the assignment on purpose. Your buddies, I understand, but what do you got against me? Your entrance was great, but you're rambling now. What are you talking about? I'm talking about Ben Dyson and Patty Hornbeck having an affair for a year. I'm talking about Hornbeck hiring Maddie to tap her phone. I'm talking about police corruption beyond interdepartmental charges. I'm talking about me making it very clear that I didn't want the fucking job because it's rigged up the ass and you insisting on me getting fucked. What do you have against me? The public has no idea what justice costs the men and women who perform it. Meaning? Meaning things for coming to me with this first. Meaning I get a favor now? Meaning you're jumping to conclusions mighty quick. If Dyson and Mrs. Hornbeck were having an affair, well, that's nothing but a coincidence. Don't do this to me. A coincidence, pure and simple. There are no coincidences in this life, Chief. You know that. I expect a report on your leads and suspects, ASAP. There's only one suspect. There's only one killer. Are you gonna let me arrest Rupert Hornbeck? I'm gonna make like I never heard you utter such nonsense.
next stop, Covington. This will be our last stop beforehand. Time for a swim? Go ahead. I don't think you can float with all that metal you're carrying. <laughs> Did you know that some people hate the taste of metal? Can't say I've ever given it much thought. Uh, I wish women tasted them all like this. No, you're going to make a prison shrink very happy someday, Ruby. <laughs> My mother used to say that. Yeah. Mrs. Walters? Ben Dyson will be alive in your office in two hours. Open the window and throw out the briefcase, right? Now. Money to get him, man. All right, thick as, thick as a brick. Well, hold that thought and close the window before the money flies away. Close the fucking window before the money flies away. You know, you know, I've, I've pictured it and, and I've dreamed about it, but but it never fit all in my head. It was too big. I mean, it's 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 still too big. It's like my head is expanding, man. I I think I'm having an epilepsy. Epilepsy? Yeah. No, man, uh, epilepsy. Yeah, it's like a religious vision. I think you mean you have an epiphany. Yeah, that's it. You know, like I thought, like they do it like in the movies, you know, they they, they just put the top layer in and, and fill up the rest with newspapers. And you know what? I would have been happy with it. But they fill up the case. They really went for it. You ever seen that airplane picture of Jeff Burma? No, old movies make me sad. Really? Why's that? I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Errol Flynn. Is he a homo? Well, last I heard, Errol Flynn was dead. Oh. <laughs> I mean, um, was he a homo? Well, how the fuck do I know? Cary Grant was a homo. Rock Hudson, too. You know what that did to my mother? No. <laughs> She was devastated. I never forgive those guys for letting her down like this. You know, now if I watch old movies, I just keep thinking in the back of my head, my mother has a crush on this guy and and he's probably a homo. It makes me sad, that's all. Yeah, you gotta pull it. Hey, why are we stopping? This battery's flat. I, I got a spare in the back. So what happens in the objective ball? Well, Flynn and a group of soldiers are about to jump out of his airplane into some fucking jungle during World War II. And this guy asks Flynn, what happens if my chute don't open? And Flynn says, well, you'll be the first one on the ground. What does it mean? Nothing, really. <laughs>
I just got paid. I'm a man of my word, are you? Yeah, I have no complaints so far. Oh, you got something for me? 5515 Elroy Street. Put your briefcase under your seat. Open it. She's unarmed. Where the hell are you? I won't be long. He's leaving right now. How long is long? Not too long. You had better be certain about this. The world gets more uncertain every second. You got cash? Keep my mouth shut. For parking. Something isn't right. Time really isn't linear, you know? What are you saying? I'm saying if you look at that watch again, I'm gonna skin you alive. Do you know something I don't? That's an open book of a question. Will you stop that? I'm merely trying to breathe in peace. Stop what? This high and mighty eloquence is epically dull. Epically doll, you have a skillfully willful way with words, Coco. Don't bother the hostage. I'm sure he's not too sympathetic to your impatience. <sighs> when they asked Jim Thompson where he come up with all those twisted plots, he said, there's only ever been one plot. You can't always get what you want. Almost. Nothing is what it seems. How come you didn't become a writer you know so much? He's pulling over. Follow him. What do you mean, follow him? He doesn't like me. What if he doesn't like me? Just do it. Ah, shit. Follow the green car. What took you so long? There was a Tupperware sound I couldn't help myself. What do you mean by it took me so long? I was worried, that's all. We have to the assistant now. Hornbeck gave him an address, made him run like hell. Standard, 357. Old-fashioned stay put type piece. I know, but I like it. What? Hey, you smoke? Oh, that's terrific. You one of those health-conscious people, or you just never need to feel cool? You know, I started smoking when I was 12. At least I'm no quitter. Hey, if I ask you something, you promise not to hit me? I just... I just wonder what it feels like, you know, to think you're gonna die. And I don't mean that in a morbid way. I mean, what I mean is I know we're not gonna kill you, even if you think I'm saying that's some torture technique or something. You must think you are, right? I mean, either because we're crazy or because we're gonna screw up or something. I just, I just wonder what it feels like. I mean, besides the fear and the bad, uncertain aspect of things, I wonder if you get any sense of inner revelations or, I don't know, empowerment, like, uh, like resolutions and stuff. I guess you don't have to tell me. I just thought you might need someone to talk to. Uh, ah, I need an ambulance here. 
corner of Jacinto and Elroy. You weren't kidding about your driving, were you? Um, because after all, you know, you are going to spend years in therapy after this ordeal, am I right? <laughs> hey, what's that short story about that scientist who spends all that time creating the first computer, the most perfect, complicated machine, and, and he works and he works until finally it's done, and, and he turns it on, and the first question he asks the computer is, is there a God? And the computer says, what does the computer say? There is now. Ha! I knew that. I was just trying to see if you'd break down and talk. You say you're not gonna kill me? Oh, I guarantee you. I mean, not that my word means anything to you, but it does to me. Can I ask you something? Yeah, anything. I'm just happy to talk. Why did you kill Patty? Patty who? You knew that lady, the senator's wife. I knew her. But we had so little time together. Oh, God, why did this have to happen on a Thursday? I'm going to jump in the shower. Tell someone who gives a fuck. I thought you might want to join me if you need to calm down. Sense of humor is one of those things you can't afford to lose. Let's go about Dyson's pet again tomorrow. I say we go Thursday. Well, I thought we agreed the weekend was better. It's crying out to me, honey. It's in my gut. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I mean, I get dizzy just picturing your gut, baby, you know? But Lizard, he thinks well, that it's better Well, fuck Lizard. We... You set this whole thing up. You and me. Yeah. And I'm telling you we go Thursday. I had a little dream about it. You did? Yeah, I did. But this guy must have a scadillion bodyguards and a bazillion high-tech alarm systems and what have you. Cleaning lady goes out, we go in. It's too simple. Simplicity ain't necessarily bad. There's always room for error. Well, that's comforting. Why aren't you the one packing? Well, I don't want to risk the gun going off when I try to cover his face. Oh, it just makes me nervous. Coco, you're a better shot than me anyway. That's true. <laughs> it's a precaution, that's all. Oh, it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> said you weren't going to kill me.
You've been s sweet talking to me, you bullshit. You've been laughing at me behind my back. Explain this to me. Fuck you. That's not the answer I wanted. Go ahead, Rickles. <laughs> This ain't even fucking close to over, you son of a bitch! This hasn't even started! Smell that burning flesh stick, then. Smell it! Fucking thing you're gonna smell in your life. Think about all your fucking companies, all your goddamn money you didn't get to spend. Was it worth it for a few moments of ecstasy with my wife? Did you tell her you love her, huh? Did she whisper nice things in your ear? Did she mention she was telling me the same things at night? Oh. She didn't love you. How could she? But she loved you. Because you're so special. Is that right? Because I cared for her. You respected her. Yes. You respected her. Once a week, with your cock in her face, you make me sick! <laughs> Apologize, asshole! Is that why you had her killed? Because you loved her? Apologize! There's nothing to apologize for. Apologize to me! I'm so sorry. My name is Ben Dyson. I was kidnapped yesterday. Can you trace this call and send an ambulance, please? Just go. I'm gonna stay. Make sure you're okay. Please. I've never seen you before. I don't know who you are. Code four, fast food establishment on the side. You're going to have a beautiful new nose on the side. Jeez, he's sending in the whole city. Sending the whole city where? That Ben Dyson gig. He called 911 a minute ago. Alive? Ooh. At least when he called. 5515. That's a block which way? Uh, just past the cemetery. Uh, Detective, I'm pretty sure that ankle's broken. Get her to the hospital.
Hop in the ankle. Why? You gonna lend me your cast? Do yourself a big time favor and blow out of here before you really get hurt. I'm curious. You got a mop in there? Scrubbing oils? Sponges? There's no time for this. Talk to the chief. I'm going in for a minute. I can't let you go in there. I'm going in. You're not going in. Friedman, leave, please. Why, are you going to kill me, too? God damn it, Friedman. You did your job. I got to do mine. Now, you know none of this is personal, so don't pretend it is. I'll tell you why none of this is personal. Because you are not a person. I'm going in now. I believe this is a federal investigation, Detective Grimes. Thanks for guarding the scene. I'll be sure to put in a word for you in my report. I didn't ask for a rum and coke. I asked for a pina colada. You look like you've seen a ghost. One too many. How the hell are you, sweetie? I'm alive. But you're not. Dear Jesus, some people say life is what you bargain for. I'm starting to think life isn't much of a bargain to begin with. The more I live, the less I learn, the less I know, the more I regret. I've done things I never dreamed of doing and lived to tell. Maybe it's true that we can all get a fresh start, somehow. Myself, I'm not too sure, but I'll keep you posted. This is the capital of bad luck and dope Breaking a piece of you is your only hope Nobody loves you So corrupted, you're 
so extreme God and the angels are out of your dream This is the century I don't believe In anything but What's up my sleeve So what's up your sleeve Nobody loves you Jesus and me I've got my reasons So does he I want your money But He wants your soul loved you and it was true Nobody knows that better than you I'm not political I did what I could I didn't mean no harm, but I mean no good. Nobody loves you, but Jesus and me. I want you, Mr.